Hi guys, Jeff from Ethical Practice and Evolve Natural Medicine. I'm here today, thanks to Massage and Myotherapy Australia, to provide you with an extra tip on how to create a successful, sustainable uh, practice. So the big one today we're gonna to be talking about is the idea of being able to go back and assess the results of the actions that we've taken. One of the mistakes that we all make, and honestly, I've made them as well, I've, I've spent a lot of, lot of time trying to figure out how to run a successful practice. One of the mistakes we make is that we take action, that action doesn't work, and so we give up. For any success in any situation, any business, any endeavor, we need to make sure that if something's not working, we assess what the issue is, make an adjustment, and try again. That doesn't work, make an adjustment, try again. The key to success is to be able to see failure as only a stepping stone along the way to achieving your outcome. True failure only occurs when we stop trying. So I urge you on those times where you just feel like giving up, you feel like you've had enough, nothing's working, those awful days where you've had perhaps some terrible clients as well or lots of people cancelling, don't give up. It's really important to stop, take a breath, assess what's going on, look at what you need to do to be able to make some changes, make those changes and step forward. Thanks for taking the time to watch this today. I hope it's been helpful. Have a great day. Hey guys, I hope you can join me next year at National Conference in Adelaide. I've got two things that I'm presenting there. A workshop prior to the actual conference on self-care for therapists. Okay, so this, look, it doesn't get any more important in terms of therapist well-being. Okay, we're going to pick it apart the whole day. There's so much to address. I'm so super um, enthused about getting you to work as good and as effective as you can. The second day is peripheral nerve entrapments, and that is all about addressing something that goes under the radar, especially for you as therapists. So we're going to be assessing everyone's tension and we're going to be looking for your own peripheral nerve entrapments. I can't wait to see you there. I hope you can join me. Have you completed the ethics and practice requirement? Massage and Myotherapy Australia Education Committee, Ethics Committee and Board of Directors introduced a requirement for all association members to complete a module of study around ethical practice. This allows the association to assure the public that its membership holds a strong commitment to professional practice. This free module is reflective and allows therapists to review their understanding of ethical practice. New members are required to complete the module in the first year of membership and again every three years. Ethics in Practice module attracts 20 CPE points for members. If you are not a member, you can purchase Ethics in Practice at massagemyotherapy.com.au. For more information or to order the module, please visit the Association's website and consider joining Massage and Myotherapy Australia the home of professional therapists. Hey folks, uh, Dave Sheen here from Connect. I've got Anne Davey from uh, our office here in just to give us a bit of an update on how certification's going. How are you going, Anne? Yeah, good. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, we've just finished a tour of Queensland. Okay. So we did three workshops slash presentations and um, talked about certification. There were lots of questions. Yep. And um, Must be good meeting people face to face to be able to talk about it so much easier than emails and oh, because there's only so many so many emails our members can get I guess so probably absolutely. refreshing to see people's faces and yeah. chit chat. Oh look it was so fulfilling all the questions the mm -hmm. interest in it and what we found out is they need that face to face just to go through the workbook whilst it's not difficult to do it is a barrier we found that people are thinking that it's just too much, but mm. feedback is that it's not. Once we went through it in the workshop, they're all done, completed, and out of the three workshops, over 50% signed that's, up on that's the That's an amazing uh, rate. So mm. um, it sounds like certification is starting to really pick up yep, interest and conversion into the program itself. Mm -hmm. um, 
So we've got staff here. They're all working pretty yep. hard on it too. There's a lot. There's a lot of process that goes on behind the scenes. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so next year, what's the what's the aim as far as getting out to the members? Uh, other well, we're planning trips to other parts of okay. the country. Yep. We're going to do Victoria because it, you know it's close to the mm, office. Sure. And we've, we're planning to go to WA in February. Mm -hmm. So that's the next trip, and then we'll look at the other states. So we're certainly going around Australia to get the word out. Okay, cool. Yeah. So again, and everyone at the association, the members have probably been um, hammered with all the information, mm. but just really quickly, if anyone's interested after hearing and talk about um, certification now, what should they do to find out more? If you want to email certification at massagemyotherapy.com.au and that goes through to Steve, who's our dedicated team member. He does work part-time, but that's his role, and he will get back to you as soon as possible with all the information that you need. And we are on hand if you want to give us a call and talk through if you are if you have any questions whatsoever. Fantastic. And obviously look out for dates next year for yeah. the road trips. The road trips, um, yep. They'll be widely advertised. We'll put them in the e-news and hopefully the journal mm -hmm. by the time the next journal comes out. And also we'll do direct emails. So how long do the talks go for? Uh, they're two-hour seminars. Yep. So we ran them in that we do a bit of an industry update okay. because we don't get out very much sure. to meet with members. And then we <coughs> talk about why we, why the board decided to develop sure, the program, yeah, yeah. what's in it for the member, and feedback from other members, how they've used it, because mm -hmm. we've got 127 so far, and the number's rising. That's mm. not counting those that signed up last week. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. sensational. And that, that takes about an hour, and then the second hour is going through the actual workbook. Okay, Yeah, fantastic. Which is good, and everybody talks about what they're writing and it just makes it easier for everybody. Mm. Mm. Okay. There you go. You've heard it from Anne. So uh, get some more information and sign up soon. Okay, guys. Uh, thanks for, very much, Anne. No problem. For uh, taking the time out. No worries. See you next time. Thanks. Hello from Associated Body Work and Massage Professionals, the leading association for massage therapists in the United States. I'm Leslie Young and I'm ABMP's International Ambassador. I'm so excited about our new partnership with Massage and Myotherapy Australia. Now MMA members can join as ABMP associate members at a deep discount and access more than 200 hours of online continuing education and other member benefits. So for more information, visit abmp.com slash MMA. Together, we look forward to supporting you and your career. Hey guys, Dave Sheen here from Connect. Uh, I'm very excited to introduce you guys to Emily Jacks. Welcome. Thank you. Now, Emily, the name of your firm is Generation Us. Correct. Um, do you want to explain to the folks at home what that's all about? So Generation Us is all about changing the negative dialogue around millennials and we provide a coaching and training service specifically for millennials who are aged 23 to 37. That's wow. kind of yep. the category. But we also do some work in corporates and businesses that want to break down um, the generational barriers or differences that exist. So we do a lot of work really around communication. That's essentially mm. what everything centres around. Okay, and the relevance for, um, I guess, massage therapists, mm -hmm. um, how, how does that interplay with, with what you do? So I would imagine that massage therapists would have a huge proportion of millennials working mm. for them. Um, by 2025, millennials are going to make up two thirds of our workforce. Wow. Yep. So uh, they're going to be a huge proportion of um, employees that they're going to need to attract, retain and engage. And as everybody would probably know, based on the media around millennials, mm. they are very different and they have different expectations and that provides quite the challenge. Okay. So what sort of services, um, and not just in massage therapy, but what sort of services do you offer through Generation Us to, to a worker or yeah, someone in the workplace? Sure, so we do a lot of work around career reset, so people who are okay. um, in a career that they hate. We, we deal with a lot of young people who, who go to uni and study what their parents wanted them to study, okay, yeah. and then they end up in a job that they really, really despise, and sometimes it can end in some mental health issues. Mm -hmm. So we do work with them around helping them define what it is they really 
um, really want, what they're passionate about and what their values are and aligning a career around that. Okay, and, and the reasoning for your, I guess, focus on that actual generation that you're talking about, what's, what was the driver there for you? Uh, for me, it was around the fact that when I started doing research into what millennials want, mm. I found that a lot of the research out there was really negative. It was really old. Um, a lot of the research that we use about millennials in Australia is actually from the US, so it's not even relevant here. Oh, right. So there is a, there's a difference. There's definitely a mm -hmm. difference um, because generations used to be defined biologically, mm. so the span of time between parents and their offspring. But because we're having children so so much later now, like the average age of your first child in Western countries is mm. around 30 to 32, so the generations were becoming too big. So they're, they're now defined sociologically, so it's based on a group of people who've shared similar experiences that have shaped their values, beliefs and behaviours. Okay. And as you can imagine, technology and just the rapid pace of mm. change in the world is meaning that the generations are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So I started studying all of that. I actually uh, wanted to study anthropology at right. university, but my dad talked me out of it. <laughs> and was he an anthropologist? No, he was not. He was an electrician. <laughs> right. And he, um, he convinced me to study a commerce degree. And I feel like I've kind of got there in the end because I'm doing my own research now. And that's really kind of where it all started. And then I really wanted to change the narrative because mm. I felt that millennials were getting a bad rap. And the more I worked with them and the more I understood them, the more I could see the value that they bring to, to workplaces and the world in general. Well, do you want to maybe expand on that? So some of the, um, the benefits of hiring? Sure. So uh, I feel that millennials as employees, mm. if, you, if you can engage them and motivate them, are amazing because they have a unique mindset that cannot be taught. So they have this entrepreneurial mindset mm -hmm. that I think is born from the fact that they've grown up in the best economic times on record. Sure. So they're, they're risk takers. They're change makers. They are all about challenging the status quo, and I think that that's where a lot of the friction comes from, mm. because some of the older generations don't <coughs> like that. But if there's, you, there's pushback there. From, there is. Yeah. Yep. And because they've had a voice at home with their parents, the way that they've been brought up, they've been given choice. They bring that kind of thinking into the workplace. Mm. So that can be quite challenging. But if you embrace it, I think that it's it's an asset. If you think of any kind of disruptive businesses mm. that have been started in the last 10 years. They've always, all of them have been created by millennials for millennials, but we're all using them now. So if you can harness their, their mindset mm. and utilise it effectively, I think that they are great employees. And they're actually a lot more loyal than you think they are. Okay. Yeah. Because that's a misconception in some ways, isn't it? You hear in, out there that uh, they're, they're some, in some ways disloyal. Correct. And selfish. Yes, so I mean, if you read the, if you if you believe the press, they're selfish, mm. entitled, lazy, they're job hoppers. It's all about them. It's all about instant gratification. Um, I think that some of their traits are portrayed in a mm. negative light. When, mm. Whereas, if you look at them positively, you can see that they can bring certain benefits to your organisation. So, if you're dealing with millennial consumers, if they're your target market, then you should be having millennials working in your business, mm. helping you understand what they want because they, they understand what they want, we don't. So there's, um, I guess there's a two-pronged attack on education, so you need to look at educating those that are not millennials, mm -hmm. and millennials need to understand uh, what pushback they're gonna receive from, potentially from people from maybe an older generation, if they're young and that they confront managers who are, you know, from the, from the older generations. Yep. So it's a, I guess it's a, a two-way thing, is it? or It is, and I feel like it's all about communication. Mm. Um, millennials communicate differently to some of the older generations. Um, they speak differently. Mm. They value different things, and um, that creates conflict. So a lot of the work that we do is helping coach millennials on how to get their ideas across, how to, how to work out, how to communicate with their manager, to build trust and get that next promotion or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the, the more important aspects for millennials when they're looking for a job? Sure, so the most important thing for them is that there's a values alignment. Mm -hmm. They want to make sure that the, they're working for a company that they can feel proud to tell their friends that they're working okay. for someone that's making a difference. 
Um, for them, it's all about purpose. So they want to have a purpose-led career, and that's actually our mission, mm -hmm. is to create the next generation of purpose-led leaders because when we're living on purpose, obviously we feel more energised, we feel more motivated. Mm. So if you've got a, a, a business and you don't have a really clear purpose that they can align with, then they're probably going to become disengaged. Um, the other thing is workplace flexibility. So flexible working hours and leave is far more important to them than perks such as food and drink okay. and a foosball table. Yeah. From my research that came out. <clears throat> and they want to coach, so they want to work for a manager or a leader that they like, they want to have a relationship with them. Mm. So, so young people these days have a very different relationship with their parents. They're kind of friends with their parents mm. and they want that kind of relationship at work. So gone are the days where it's like, you know, we have to separate our, our lines and, you know, it's all about, um, you know, making sure that our relationship is very professional. Those lines have completely been crossed. So uh, millennials want to come to work and feel like they're part of a family, mm. so a family business. And the other thing is my research showed that face-to-face -face communication was really important. So 80% preferred face-to-face -face over text or email. Okay. Um, so examples of, I guess, companies that um, certainly attach themselves to those values would be some of the, I guess, some of the um, tech companies mm -hmm. where there's open, like that, developing that family sort of culture. Is that would that be right in saying? Yeah. So for um, most kind of new age companies now that get all of this stuff, mm. they've realised that people want to come to work and be themselves. Mm -hmm. So they embrace individuality. So you know you. Gone are the days where you have to wear a suit to work. Well, we've got our suit jackets on today. Um, Very rarely are they on, but yeah. yes, for me anyway. Um, so people want to go to work and be themselves. Sure. So if, if you have an environment that means that you have to rock up and you kind of have to pretend that you're somebody else, mm. that's not really going to appeal to, to young people. So it's all about that friendly, warm family environment where you treat people with respect. I mm. mean, it, it all makes sense. This is not new stuff, but it is becoming more and more important when we're dealing with the younger generations. Okay. Um, now, let's talk about your businesses because they seem to sort of intertwine a little bit. Because one, on one hand, you've got HR, mm -hmm. and on the other hand, you've got Generation Us. Correct. So they're two different entities. So um, do you just want to explain, if someone was interested, what, mm -hmm. what they both represent to someone potentially watching today? So HR Gurus is a HR consulting mm -hmm. and coaching business. So they're, they're kind of similar but different. Mm -hmm. And we provide an outsourced HR service to small to medium businesses. Okay. So typically who've got between 20 and 100 employees who don't want to have a full-time HR resource mm -hmm. but need HR support. So we go in <coughs> and we really set up your HR structure and then support the manager, management team to deal with any... HR issues that they might have. We also do a lot of coaching and training mm -hmm. in that business. So our, our whole philosophy is to build up your leadership team so that they can do it themselves. That We don't want to create a relationship where we have to come and do it all for them mm. because that doesn't work. You can't wheel in the HR nasty people. Um, it's just, <laughs> you know, you, you can't absolve your people leadership responsibilities, sure. although that's what some of our clients would probably like sometimes. Yeah. Um, and then Generation Us is really about educating people about millennials. So I do a lot of speaking mm. around millennials. I'm in the media quite a bit talking about my research and then we do coaching for so that's, millennials. That's the, and that's to sort of, um, I guess, educate those that are not millennials Correct. about millennials. That's your that's, right. that's your core focus with that, yeah? Yes, yeah. So to change the narrative and help people understand that millennials as a generation... Mm bring enormous value, they have some amazing traits that I think that we are already seeing the benefits of. If you think about the way that they've embraced social enterprise, I think that that's a really, really good example of what millennials are bringing to the sure. table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so for them, it's not about making money and profits, it's actually about giving back. Mm. And I do a lot of interviews with social entrepreneurs and really successful ones telling their story, trying to share positive leadership yep, stories rather yep. than all the negative hype It's out that we there get. In, the, in the media. Yeah. Yes, yep. And then we obviously do a lot of training around communication. Mm -hmm. We do training um, with corporates around intergenerational teams and mm. how to break down those barriers. And yeah, 
I think that's about it. Keep them busy. That's Absolutely. right. Uh, now, if the folks at home want to know a little bit more about either of those uh, entities, what, what should they do? So you could visit um, my website, Generation Us, so www.generationus.com.au. Yep. And I've got a whole bunch of research. I've got an e-book. I've got a, um, an infographic which okay. is with some data around millennials if anyone's interested. And then HR Gurus is www.hrgurus.com.au. All right, fantastic. Well, Emily, thanks again for coming along on the show. And uh, once again, guys, if you are interested in anything to do with uh, millennials, here's your go-to. All right, so uh, thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Joining Massage and Myotherapy Australia is easy. Visit the Massage and Myotherapy Australia website, www.massagemyotherapy.com.au. Click Join Now, where you can either join online or download an application form. Your qualification will define which level you join, massage, remedial or advanced member. Ensure you provide all information requested, including certified copies of your academic transcript, qualification certificate and statutory declaration. It's important you certify documents and complete the statutory declaration. Documents can be certified by members of certain professions, such as medical practitioners and pharmacists. Also ensure you provide clinic details, first aid certificate and insurance certificate of currency. If you choose our preferred insurer Aon, you'll be eligible to receive a discount once your membership is processed, contact Aon directly via the Massage and Myotherapy Australia website. Once the association receives all required information, your application will be processed. Join now and choose the Association of Professional Therapists.